am Margie with Asking Spot, and I was able to hit some garage sales and estate sales today, and I got some frames. Not just one frame, two frames, but four frames. And the whole thing, well, it's four dollars. For four dollars, I can go ahead and try some art project crafts I've been wanting to do. So let's see how it turns out. First things first, with pretty much any object, I get secondhand. Always give it a good clean, including these frames. I'm gonna be using vinegar, one part to three parts water in a spray bottle. Not too surprisingly, when I opened up the frames uh, to take them out, so I just wanna work on painting these, I took out the backs of them. And like with this one, this was on the inside and it's just a flimsy piece of paper printout, which is what I kind of expected. And then they also have the uh, glass and the little cardboard and these little pieces of paper and stuff, you sometimes wanna keep them because they help keep the glass and your piece of artwork pressured in here. So don't toss those right away. But here's the wild thing. What I didn't expect was the two frames that were matching, they had real art in them. Yeah, it's a uh, Claire Mocher. I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly. Um, but what gave it away was A, these things didn't slide out, they are on actual paper, but you can feel them. They have sort of a, a raised feeling because of the paint that's on them. And they're tiny little signatures on here. Way cool. So, that's changing what I was gonna do. I just hate the idea of destroying anybody's original art. So I'm gonna make these frames to complement these two, and then the other two frames, I'm just gonna have some fun with. So here's the difference between a gloss copper, this right here, and a copper paint. This one, I'm now gonna put on this one. Now I've got my lamp video that you might have seen, my 70s lamp that I did a copper patina and that was just like spot on what you're supposed to do for it, or at least in my opinion it was. I am going to try something slightly different with this one. Instead of doing a super light blue with a touch of green, I'm actually going to go for a much more teal color and I'm going to try and lighten it up and use that to kind of brush on it. It's all going to be put on by sponge. So I kind of like how the patina effect turned out on this. And I would recommend it also if you were considering doing it to a massive piece of furniture, maybe get something like a little frame with decorative parts on it so that you can practice a paint effect. Oh, and speaking of paint effects, if this type of patina, the way I did it, isn't necessarily working for you, you might want to try Katja. I think I pronounced her name right. I'll put it you know, both places. Uh, Katja is fierce. She does really great paint effects on furniture and big pieces, and it's really beautiful. And she's the one who got me in the mindset of, it's gonna look worse before it looks better. Because I'd watch her do stuff and I was like, no, why are you doing that? You made it look, oh wait, that looks beautiful. So you should check out her videos as well. Also, she's an inspiration just because she wears cute shoes and beautiful sweater sets and doesn't get a drop of paint on herself. I think like in one video, she's like, oh, I got a little on my ponytail. I really like what this frame is. It's just incredibly simple and basic. But I want to add just a hint of fun. So I'm going to put some pink on one of the sides. I haven't figured out which, but it'll just be something different. So for coat number two on this frame, 
I'm going to mix a little bit of the original magenta and then I'm also going to mix in it with it this metallic pink I have because well I have it And now with this last one, I'm going to go ahead and do a reverse of it. I like it, but I want to go ahead and have dark with just the gold finishing kind of popping through. So what I'm going to try and do is put on a dark blue paint. Here's the thing though, it's, it's very shiny and non-porous, so it will be hard for the blue paint to stick, but then I don't want to miss up all this you know, detailed work right here. So I think I might just do some careful sanding right around all the flat spots and then deal with this later, carefully detailed painting it. Well, at the end, it turned out sanding would have worked, but there's just too much finer detail that I can't get to. So I decided I should prime it. I would do that with a bigger piece of furniture, right? Light sand, then prime, then paint. But then I thought, you know what? I have just a ton of white chalk paint, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. However, my caution to you though, is prime paint is made to rub off or scrape off, you know, with light sanding to give that look of weathered look. So if you're gonna use this and you don't want that, you have to make sure that you paint something over it or a top coat over it. Um, but like I said, I will be painting over it because I'm gonna go with a very dark blue. Next morning, here's what we have. It's kind of interesting that this one with the prime, because I'm going to go through and put blue on it, it's weirdly appealing, just as is. I mean, you know, we would have to have another coat and everything, so just another frame idea. looks like I've got another good stopping point. I mean, the blue with the gold, if this was my end game, I would have been a little neater about it, but otherwise I think it does look kind of cool. So another frame idea, but it's not the idea I still have in my head. And um, the dark blue that I found in my paint kit's not quite dark enough, so I'm gonna add some like a gray to it to get it a little darker, but then I'm also gonna water it down so I can paint and have it seep in and let the raised parts of this remain on the gold side. So it'll be a little bit more detailed, hopefully. Give them a gloss but already I really like how they're turning out because this is for one of these guys and I've got the pink one that looks pretty cool I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, green tape off and gloss over that the gloss I'm using is a polyurethane it's a water base uh, I like to use it it's a high gloss on that um, I just I can't wait to show you the the blue one I think it turned out pretty cool by the way, if you haven't already, could you please subscribe? Oh, and hit the bell. It'll give you a little alert when I do a new video. Thanks. Here we go, the final results. This wasn't what I originally planned, but when I found out these two were original pieces of artwork, oh my goodness, I'm so happy. It it turned out this way, they look great. As for the others, well, this is my younger, much younger, 
Um, she's now heading off to college soon. And uh, then this is my older child's actual painting. So this is original art. This was kind of what caused me to do this in the first place, was I wanted something to frame this piece, which was just a demo for some art she was gonna do on a larger scale. Well, I hope messing with frames has given you some inspiration to mess with your own and just have some fun.